Problem three. Two airplanes leave the same airport at 12 noon. We have a plane, beautiful skies, which we'll call B, flies at a bearing uh, 55 degrees west of north at 325 miles per hour, plane cloudy day, which we'll call C, flies at a bearing of 26 degrees west of south at 300, 300 miles per hour. How far apart are the planes at 2 p.m.? Uh, find the bearing from B to C at 2 p.m. as well. So if we label parts of our triangle, we'll call the airport A, which is convenient. Uh, we said we'd call beautiful skies, plane B, it flew to the northwest. Uh, and plane cloudy day, we'll call C, and it flew to the southwest giving us these three points, A, B, and C. Uh, we'll go ahead and label some distances on here as well. Uh, we're looking for the distance at 2 p.m., which means that the planes have been flying for two hours. So our first plane would have been flying for 650 miles. Since we'll take 325 miles per hour and multiply by two. Meanwhile, our second plane will have traveled 600 miles. Label those two distances. We also know both of our bearings, which we can put on here. That first plane flew to bearing of 55 degrees west of north. Second plane, 26 degrees west of south. Uh, so we can put those two angles together to give us angle A, which is the interior angle on this triangle. So angle A should come out to 180 degrees minus 55 degrees minus 26 degrees which should come out to 99 degrees. So go ahead and label that inside our triangle. And the only side we're missing is side A. So I'll label that as well. Now, ultimately, what are we looking for? We want how far apart the planes are at two o'clock that would be distance A as labeled in this diagram. And also we're going to look for the bearing from B to C, which means we're gonna be interested in this purple angle up here, which I'll label beta. We can see that's a very, it's a rather skinny angle. So those are the two pieces we're gonna search for. So using the law of cosines, we'll start by getting A or side A from the law of cosines. We know that A squared should be equal to 650 squared plus 600 squared minus two times 650 times 600 multiplied by the cosine of 99 degrees. So A then should be the square root of all of that. We can pop it into a calculator and come up with an answer. Uh, when I did that, I got 951.1 miles. So these two planes should be 951.1 miles apart. Uh, next, we'll start working on that bearing angle. Uh, in order to get to the bearing, I'll first need to know the measure of angle B, however. So we'll use the law of sines to pick that up. Should be able to say the sine of angle B 
divided by 600 should be equal to the sine of angle A over A. So the sine of 99 degrees divided by that value for A that we just found, 951.1. We solve this thing out for B. It should be the inverse sine of 600 over 951.1 times the sine of 99 degrees. Again, put that into a calculator. I got 38.5 degrees. So up in this corner, this angle should be 38.5 degrees. Now if I compare my angle beta to that corner, I know that the bearing from B back to A should be 55 degrees to the southeast, uh, meaning that if I look at B and my bearing angle beta added together, I should get up to 55 degrees. So B plus beta should be 55 degrees. So our bearing angle should be 55 degrees minus 38.5 degrees. Which comes out to 16.5 degrees. Meaning that ultimately our bearing from B to C, uh, we have an overall direction of Southeast. So 16.5 degrees East of South. Moving on to problem four. Custom wrapping paper costs $3 per square foot. Uh, if we need a triangular sheet of paper that has the dimensions of 1.5 by 2.75 by 3.25, find the cost of the wrapping paper. So if we felt so inclined, we could probably label each of these sides. 1.5 would be the shortest one, 2.75 middle one, 3.25 then being the largest one. Uh, and what are we after? We want the total cost of the wrapping paper. So here our cost which we know the cost per square foot. So the total cost should be cost per square foot, which was $3 multiplied by the area. So cost per square foot times the total area should give us the total cost, which means we're gonna want the area of this triangle. Uh, since we know all three sides, we'll use the new formula from worksheet 14 to solve for that area. Uh, so first we're going to get S, the semi-perimeter. So A plus B plus C over two. So this should be 1.5 plus 2.75 
plus 3.25 all divided by 2 and that works out to be a number I got 3.75 So go ahead and plug that into our equation for total cost. Take our $3 per square foot and multiply by the area, which will end up being the square root of several things multiplied together. So we'll want 3.75 times the difference between 3.75 and each of our three sides. So 3.75 minus 1.5 comes out to 2.25. Take the difference between S and 2.75 and we get one. And the difference between S and 3.25 and we get 0.5. You can put all of that into a calculator and come up with a total cost of $6.16. Right. And on to problem five, we have another airplane problem. Oh, it's going to start from Accelerating Airport and fly due north to Blundering Bayou. That's a distance of 150 miles. The airplane will then turn to a bearing of 40 degrees east of north and fly another 100 miles to Connection City. Uh, and we're going to solve for the straight line distance uh, between Accelerating Airport and Connection City and then find the bearing from Connection City to Accelerating Airport. So with all those alliterations, uh, we can have a pretty informed decision for choosing A, B, and C, starting with accelerating airport being A, but you didn't see that coming. Blundering by you will be B, connection city will be C. So those will be our, the three points of our triangle, A, B, and C. Uh, then we know the distances this time around. Uh, as we traveled from A to B, we had a distance of 150 miles. Uh, that side is opposite angle C, so I'm going to fill it in in red so it matches that color. Uh, next, we know the distance from Blundering Bayou to Connection City to be 100 miles. We'll fill that in, that's opposite angle A, so I'll fill it in blue. And the side that we're missing is opposite angle B, so I'll call it B. Fill it in in green. Uh, next up, uh, we'll fill in information that we know about angles. Uh, we have a bearing that is 40 degrees east of north. So, this angle here, the angle that is outside of our triangle by blundering by you should be 40 degrees since bearings are always measured from a north or south line. Uh, and we can use that bearing to find the measure of angle B uh, since it's just the difference between uh, 40 degrees and 180 degrees because those two have to add up to be a to be a full line. So B plus 40 should be 180. That means that angle B is 140 degrees. Now, if we come back to answer the initial question, we were interested in a couple of pieces. 
uh, we want the distance between A and C, which would be the length of side B according to our, to our diagram. And then also we want the bearing from Connection City to Accelerating Airports, the bearing from C to A, which means we want this bearing up at the top of the diagram. So let's start by finding the length of side B. So B squared should be equal to uh, 150 squared plus 100 squared minus two times 150 times 100 multiplied by the cosine of 140 degrees. Get all of that from the law of cosines. So if we take the square root of the other side, plug that all into a calculator, we ought to be able to get an answer I got 235.5. And this will be in miles because all of our distances were being measured in miles. So that answers the first part of the question. Distance between Accelerating Airport and Connection City is 235 and a half miles. So next, uh, we want the bearing from Connection City to Accelerating Airport. So, one handy trick to notice uh, is that uh, our bearing angle from C to A should be the same as our bearing from A to C, uh, which means that our bearing angle has the exact same measure as angle A. So our bearing angle and the measure of angle A should be the same. So if we get angle A, uh, we'll have basically solved the whole problem. So we'll use the law of sines to get that now that we know the measure of angle B. So sine of angle A divided by 100 is equal to the sine of 140 divided by uh, that new side that we just solved for, 235.5, meaning that A, and subsequently our bearing angle beta, is the arc sine of 100 divided by 235.5 times the sine of 140 pop all that into a calculator, and I got 15.8 degrees. So now that we know our bearing angle, because it is the same as angle A, beta is also 15.8 degrees. Uh, the last step is to simply put this into a bearing. And if I'm going from C to A, that is a direction of Southwest. So we're looking for South 15.8 degrees West or 15.8 degrees West of South. 